Hello, welcome to Ms. Flores' virtual classroom. Today I'm doing an interactive read aloud with you. We are going to be reading another book about courage. Do you remember about the girl who showed courage in our book yesterday? Yesterday we read Roller Coaster. And we read about a girl who was afraid to go on a roller coaster. And then at the end of the story, she was really enjoying herself. So we've been reading lots and lots of books about courage this week. Today, we're going to read another book about courage. This is the book we're reading today. We're at On the High Water, High Wire. Look at the cover of this book. Marette on the High Wire by Emily Arnold McCulley. How is Marette, our main character, this girl on the front page, Marette? How is she showing courage? What is she on? Let's read to find out why Marette is on the high wire. It's also called a tightrope. She is showing courage because it would be really scary to be that high up on just one little rope. All right, and I want to take a second, I want to look at this page right here, All right? So this page right here, it's our copyright page, and it just has some pictures. Now this story takes place at a different time period than today. The illustration on these pages show Paris. Paris is a city in the country France, that's in Europe. The city is where the story takes place. The time period is a hundred years ago. This story took place a hundred years ago. How can you tell? What do you notice about the man in the picture and the girl? The man is wearing a big old top hat and the girl's wearing a dress and she's running through this town. The man and the girl are the main characters in this story. Let's find out who they are. 100 years ago in Paris, when theaters and music halls drew traveling players from all around the world, the best place to stay was the Widow Gattuse, a boarding house on English Street. Acrobats, jugglers, actors, and mimes from far away as Moscow and New York reclined on the Widow's feathered mattresses and devoured her kidney stew. And so on this first page we see Mirette and her mom. Mirette's mother, Madame Gatou, has a boarding house. A boarding house is like a hotel, except people rent rooms in the owner's house. Mirette and her mother also cook dinner for the people staying in the boarding house. Go ahead and find them in the illustration. There they are in the kitchen, and there are some of their guests. Madame Gatou worked hard to make her guests comfortable, but so did her daughter, Mirette. The girl was an expert at washing linens, chopping leeks, and paring uh, potatoes and mopping floors. She was a good listener, too. Nothing pleased her mother more to hear the over overhear the vagabond players tell of their adventures in the town that along the road. And there is Marette listening to the vagabonds talk about their adventures. One evening, a tall, sad-faced stranger arrived. He told Madame Gatou he was Bellini, a retired high-wire walker. I am here for a rest, he said. I have just the room for you, Monsieur Bellini, in the back where it's quiet, she said, but it's on the ground floor with no view. Perfect, said the stranger. I will take my meals alone. Go ahead and take a moment and look at Bellini. He's the man at the door tipping his hat. Take a moment and think about what do you know about Bellini? What do we know about him? We know that he's sad. He has a sad looking face. We know that he's a retired high wire walker, a tight rope walker. And we know that he wants to eat by himself. So he wants to be alone. Let's find out why. That afternoon, when Moret came for the sheets, there was the stranger crossing the courtyard on air. Moret was enchanted. Of all the things a person could do, this must be the most magical. Her feet tingled as if they wanted to jump up on the wire besides Bellini. And there's Moret watching Bellini walk on the wire.
Moret worked up the courage to speak. Excuse me, Monsieur Bellini. I want to learn to do that, she cried. Bellini sighed. That would not be a good idea, he said. Once you start, your feet are never happy again on the ground. Oh, please teach me, Moret begged. My feet are already unhappy on the ground. Brown, but he shook his head. Moret watched him every day. He would slide his feet onto the wire, cast his eyes ahead, and cross without ever looking down, as if in a trance. And there is Moret begging Bellini to teach her. And he said no, and there she is, watching him every day. Finally, she couldn't resist it any longer. When Bellini was gone, she jumped on the wire to try it herself. Her arms failed like windmills. In a moment, she was back on the ground. Bellini made it look so easy. Surely she could do it if she kept trying. In ten tries, she balanced one foot for a few seconds. In a day, she managed three steps without wavering. Finally, after a week of many, many falls, she walked the length of the wire. She couldn't wait to show Bellini. And there she is first trying and failing and falling. And there she is after a, just a few days, a week of working every day very hard. She's able to walk the line. Let's find out what Mr. Bellini thinks. He was silent for a long time. And then he said, in the beginning, everyone falls. Most give up, but you kept trying. Perhaps you have the talent as well. Oh, thank you, said Marit. She got up two hours earlier every day to finish her chores before the sun shone in the courtyard. The rest of the days were for lessons and practice. Bellini was a strict master. Never let your eyes stray, he told her after day after day. Think of only the wire and crossing till the end. When she would cross a dozen times without falling, he taught her the wire walker's salute. Then she learned to run, to lie down, and to turn a somersault. I will never fall again, Marit shouted. Do not boast, Bellini said so sharply that Moret lost her balance and had to jump down. And there he is telling her that she might have a talent. I want, I'm going to read that very last line where he says, Do not boast, Bellini said so sharply that Moret had, had lost her balance and had to jump down. Why do you think Bellini speaks sharply or angrily at Moret? Why does he say that angrily? He says it angrily because he doesn't want her to boast. He doesn't want her to be gloating and talking about how great she is because then she might not be paying attention and she might fall. He is worried about her and he cares about her. One night, an agent from Astley's Hippodrome in London rented a room. He noticed Bellini on his way to dinner. What a shock to see him here, he exclaimed. See who? asked a mime. Why, the great Bellini. Don't you know he was... In the room in the back, Bellini, the one who crossed Niagara Falls on the thousand foot wire in 10 minutes, asked the mom. And there's Bellini walking straight to his room. He wants to eat alone. And there's everyone talking about how great he is. On the way back, he stopped in the middle to cook an omelet on the stove of live coals. Then he opened a bottle of champagne and toasted the crowd, the agent recalled. My uncle used to talk about that, said a juggler. Bellini crossed the Alps with baskets tied to his feet, fired a canyon, a cannon over the bullring in Barcelona, walked a flaming wire wearing a blindfold in Naples. The man had the nerves of an iceberg, the agent said. Whoa, listen to all the amazing things Monsieur Bellini has done on the table. Marit raced to Bellini's room. Is it true, she cried. You did all those things? Why didn't you tell me? I want to do them too. I want to go with you. I can't take you, said Bellini. But why not, asked Marit. Bellini hesitated a long time. Because I am afraid, he said at last. Marit was astonished. Afraid, she said. But why? Once you have fear on the wire, it never leaves, Bellini said. But you must make it leave, Marit insisted. I cannot. Do you wonder what Moret can do to help Bellini make his fear leave? What do you think he's going? she's going to do? What do you think she's going to do to help him? 
Go ahead and make a prediction and keep that in your brain and we can check your prediction in just a moment. Marette turned and ran to the kitchen as tears sprang to her eyes. She had so much she had felt so much joy in the wire. Now Bellini's fear was like a cloud casting his black shadow on all she had learned from him. And there she is thinking about it. Bellini paced his room for hours. It felt terrible to disappoint Marette. By dawn, he knew that if he didn't face his fear at, le at last, he could not face Marat. He knew what he must do. The question was, could he succeed? And there he is thinking about it. What do you think Bellini is going to do to face his fear? Let's find out. That night when the agent returned, Bellini was waiting for him. The agent listened to Bellini's plan with a mounting excitement. I could take care of it, he promised to himself. He added, a big crowd will make me a tidy profit. What luck, I just happen to be in Paris now. Bellini went on to find a length of hemp with a steel core. He borrowed a wench and worked, in, and worked until daylight securing the wire. And there's Bellini telling the agent. And there he is, preparing the rope. What do you think Bellini's going to do? I think he's going to walk the rope to show Marette he's no longer afraid. That evening, Marette heard the commotion in the street. Go and see what it is, her mother said. Maybe it will cheer you up. In the square, there was a hubbub. The crowd was so thick she couldn't see at first. The agent was aiming a spotlight in the sky. Return of the great Bellini, he was yelling. Could it be? Marette's heart hammered. Bellini stopped out into the water and saluted the crowd. He took a step and then froze. The crowd cheered wildly, but something was wrong. Marat knew at once what it was. For a moment, she was as frozen as Bellini. There she is. What do you think she's going to do? What is wrong? What is wrong? Bellini is frozen with fear. That's what's wrong. What do you think Marat's going to do? What is she going to do to help him? Go ahead and make that prediction. Keep it stuck in your brain. I can't wait to find out what happens. Then she threw herself at the door behind her, ran inside, up flight and flight and flight of stairs, and out through the skylight to the roof. And there she is. What do you think she's going to do? Do you think she's going to climb up the rope and help him? She stretched her arms her hands to Bellini. He smiled and began to walk toward her. She stepped onto the wire, and with the most intense pleasure as she had always imagined it might be, she started to cross the sky. Bravo! Bravo! roared the crowd. Protégé of the great Bellini! shouted the agent. He was besides himself, already planning the world tour of Bellini and Moret. And as for the master and his people, they were thinking only of the wire and crossing to the end. And there is their poster, the great Mered and Bellini. Great story. Thank you so much for joining me for our interactive read aloud today. Y'all have a great Thursday.